Hello and welcome back. In this session, we will look at an introduction to uh, snapshots. All right. Now we all we already know how you can launch your EC2 instances, how you can launch your virtual machines. We also know how you can attach additional storage, additional EBS volumes to your uh, uh, EC2 instances. Now, at any point, if you want to take a backup of your data, if you want to uh, you know, like uh, uh, protect your data from accidental deletions or, you know, kind of uh, recover your data from accidental deletions. That's where you can make use of your snapshot. So at any point when we talk about taking backup of your EBS volumes, snapshots is what we can make use of. Now in this session, we will look at an introduction to snapshots. We'll understand uh, how your snapshots uh, work. Once again, before we start off with the session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So we can make use of your EBS volumes as root volumes and we can attach them to your EC2 instances, right? So we know that we can make use of your EBS volumes as storage options. So that's your one of your storage options we have for your EC2 instances and we can attach them as root volumes to your EC2 instances. Now. Uh, once you're done attaching these volumes to your EC2 instances, you can also create a backup of this data. So at any point, if you want to take a backup of these EBS volumes, we can make use of your snapshot. So we have something known as point in time snapshots, which we can take. And these point in time snapshots, they are in the back in the um, uh, in the back end. They are actually getting stored in the S3 bucket. AWS takes care of that. You don't have to worry about it. But at any point, if you want to take a backup of your EBS volumes, snapshots is what we are looking at. So snapshots, these are your incremental backups. All right. So we'll be talking more about this in some time. But what are incremental backups? These are basically backups which will only take the changes that you have done. All right. So let's say, for example, uh, you will take a backup now. After some time, you will make some changes to the data. And again, when you take a backup of the data, it will only take a backup of the data that has changed from the time you took the first backup, all right? So that's basically what your incremental backups are. So which means that only the blocks on the device that have changed after the most recent snapshots are saved in the next snapshot that you create. So with this, you can minimize the time required to create the snapshot and also save on the storage cost by not duplicating the data. So you get two advantages with this. All right. So one, the time taken to take the backup and also the cost as well. So each snapshot that you will create will contain all of the information that is needed to restore the data to a new EBS volume. So at any point, you know, let's say from this uh, EBS volume, you create a snapshot. And then if you want to restore this snapshot, you can go ahead and do that, which is by creating a new EBS volume. So when you restore this uh, EBS snapshot, we are actually creating a new EBS volume. And this new EBS volume will have all the data from the snapshot. So this will be an exact replica of the original volume that was used to create the snapshot. So basically the point is when we create the new volume, we will get all the data back from the snapshot that we had created. So charges for the snapshots are based on the amount of data that is stored. So it will come down to uh, the amount of data like in MB or GB, how much of data you have stored in that. Um, so let's say for example, you have an EBS snapshot of 10 GB, you'll have to pay for that 10 GB of the backup cost. So because snapshots are incremental, deleting a snapshots might not reduce the data storage costs. Um, data referenced exclusively by a snapshot is removed when the snapshot is deleted, but data referenced by other snapshots is preserved. So, you know, uh, deleting a snapshot will not help us uh, reduce the cost because it is it simply contains a reference to other snapshots. All right. So unless you don't go and delete the originally the first backup, the first snapshot that you created, you won't be saving up much money by just deleting the snapshots now let's look at how your snapshots work so let's say the first snapshot that we create from a volume is always going to be a full snapshot so the first time when you take a backup of your EBS volume it's going to be a full backup all right so let's say um, I'm going to take a backup now so this is the first time I'm taking a backup now 
the first time I take a backup, it is going to be a full snapshot. It's going to be a full backup of the entire data that we have in the EVS volumes. Now, this will include all of the data blocks that has been returned to the new volume at the time of creating this snapshot. So this snapshot that we create, this will contain all the data blocks from the EVS volume because this is the first time we are creating the snapshot. Now, the subsequent snapshots of the same volume are incremental snapshots. Now, let's say after some time you update this uh, EBS volume, you modify some data or you add some data. And then when you go and take a snapshot, it is going to be an incremental snapshot. You won't be taking a full backup of the EBS volume. You're only going to take a backup of the new changes or the modified data. You're only going to take a backup of that particular data. So they include only the changed and new data blocks returned to the volume since the last snapshot was created. So whatever the full backup we have over here, it will stay in this snapshot. And then whatever the changes we have done in this volume, only the new changes or the modified data, only that will be backed up in the new snapshot that we will create. So that's basically what your incremental snapshot is. All right, so a snapshot, it follows your incremental model. So the size of the full snapshot is determined by the size of the data being backed up and not by the size of the source volume. Now, let's say your EBS volume is of the size 15 GB. We created an EBS volume of 15 GB. However, within that 15 GB, we have a data of 10 GB. So you have, let's say you have stored a data of 10 GB. Now, when you create a snapshot, it will create a snapshot for that particular 10 GB only. All right. So it is determined by the data that you have within the volumes and not the so, so and not the size of the EBS volumes. Now let's say if you have 1 GB when you create the snapshot, the snapshot will also be of 1 GB only. So similarly, the storage costs considered with the full snapshot is determined by the size of the snapshot and not the size of the source volume. So again, the cost will be determined by the amount of data that you have backed up and not on the size of your EBS volume. So what's the total size, all right? So how does this work? So let's say in, in stage one, we have an EBS volume with the capacity 15 GB. Now in this, you have a data of 10 GB capacity and then the remaining 5 GB, you don't have any data. Now at this point, when you take a backup of these EBS volumes, we are taking a full backup, all right? So this, this, this is the first time we are creating a backup and this will take a full backup of the EBS volume. Let's call it as snapshot A. This will be stage one. Now, let's say after some time, let's say stage two. Now, the same uh, EBS volume, we have modified the existing data. So out of this 10 GB data, let's say we have modified 4 GB of the data. Now, at this point, what we will do is we will take a, another snapshot. Let's call it a snapshot B. Now, when we take this snapshot B, what will happen is it will only take a backup of the 4 GB data. All right. So that's basically what your incremental backup is. It is only going to take a backup of the modified data. So the second snapshot that we will create will only have a backup of the 4 GB and the 6 GB. It will have a reference pointing to your snapshot A. So essentially what this will do is your snapshot B will have 4 GB of data backed up and it will contain a reference for the remaining 6 GB that we have. It will have a reference to the snapshot. So that when we restore the data, it will restore this 4 GB and also the 6 GB from the snapshot A. So that's basically what your incremental backups is. It is only going to take a backup of the modified data. Now let's say you have stage three. Now in this stage three, Again, now let's say we have added new data of 2 GB capacity. All right, so we have uh, additional data of 2 GB. Now, when we take a snapshot C, now again, it will only take a backup of the 2 GB data. All right, only the new data or the modified data. Now, in this case, we are adding a new data of 2 GB capacity. So my snapshot 3 or snapshot C will have a backup of 2 GB and it will have a reference of 4 GB pointing to or in this case let's say the 6 GB pointing to snapshot A and the remaining 4 GB pointing to your snapshot B. Alright so essentially this is how 
your snapshots work so in this case what is happening here is my snapshot c will have a backup of 2 gb the 4 gb it is pointing to my snapshot b and the 6 gb it is pointing to snapshot a and again my snapshot b is also pointing this 6 gb of uh, backup to my snapshot a so that's how your incremental backups work so every time you take a backup it will see any what is the modified data you have or what is the new data that you have and it will take a backup of only that data only the first time when you take a backup of your ebs volumes it is going to take a full snapshot it's going to take a full backup of your data after that any subsequent snapshots that you will take it is going to follow your incremental backup model so that's basically an introduction to uh, snapshots in the next session i will be showing you how you can take uh, how you can create your snapshots and then we'll also look at how you can uh, restore your uh, snapshots you know, by, like, by creating new EBS volumes, we will look at that as well. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.